Donovan Bennett is on the line of Sportsnet. DJ, how you doing, man? Fellas, how are you? You've reached one eight hundred dial Negro here to talk about all your race matters. <laughs> that is eight. not. That is not why. That yeah, I had a conversation with you earlier that I didn't want it to be that. Um, that is that is not how I you gave me the phrase the platform without pretense. That's what I was trying to do was giving you platform without pretense, DJ. Rolodex, the uh, black people found one. That's um, not. I say that. that is, <laughs> it's I also that, friends. I say that. Yes. I say that. I say that in jest, uh, and I say that uh, with love because I appreciate the ability to come on and share the platform for two reasons. One, because I know having spoken to many of them, many of the people who share my pigment, who share my industry, they don't have a platform to talk about it. And in fact, they are scared that if they talk about it honestly, there will be some repercussions. And some have already felt some repercussions on what they've done on social media. That's not the case for me. So that is a privilege I know I have. And I know your space that you're sharing with me is a safe space. And you've shared it with me to talk about things other than things like this. Uh, that's one. And also the, the other part of why I, I jokingly say that, but there is kind of some truth in every joke is there is no place in, in our industry where black people are front facing and can have these conversations all of the time. The show is Tim and Sid. It's not Tyrone and Solomon. We don't have a, an abundance of people with an opportunity to talk about those things. That is why I appreciate you guys sharing some of your privilege with me. And I understand it's a privilege and I, I, I do uh, take it seriously, even though I, I started off with a joke as always. Donovan Bennett joining us here, our friend. You could, hey, when, when, when it's a conversation among friends, which I've always, you know, you were there as a part of the podcast to start. I've always just wanted this to be conversation among friends, no matter what it turned into and what it ended up being. So if it's a conversation right. among friends, then you're allowed to do what you did off the top of the show, uh, off the top when we brought you on. So, so let me just ask you this. Like, I don't want to, Sid and I weren't trying to pontificate on what we thought others were thinking, and we don't want you to have to represent anybody. We just want you to have the conversation with us. Like, what, what, are, you, what are your thoughts today? What are your feelings today? Because I sat in my son's bed yesterday uh, understanding that I didn't have to have a conversation with him that I know a lot of my friends were having with their sons, no matter what their age, and that had me crestfallen. That that was the heaviest part of all of this for me. Like, what, you're, can you encapsulate what you've gone through in the last 24, 48, more than that hours? Tim, you got your Barbara Walters on. You started with the sun, which is, you know where um, this would hit me. Because, um, you know, I, I, I've engaged on social media Um and there's a question whether or not that's smart, but, um, you know, there's been lots of pushback, but, but some of it is, you know, you're just kind of doing this for likes and retweets and doing this for clout and please, please, please feel free to unfollow me. This is not about me. When I see those scenes, whichever one you'd like to, to choose, but in this case we'll use, um, you know, the late Mr. Floyd, uh, in the last seconds of his life. When I see those scenes, I, I see a lack of humanity, right? You're, you're seeing someone not being seen as equal um, or as important. And when, and when a bunch of people don't want to have that conversation, they're telling you that that life is not equal or important. But when I, we've seen these scenes a bunch time and time again. We could list the names. They're all hashtags at this point. I used to see myself in those scenes. I don't anymore. I see my son in those scenes. I see Desmond Timothy Bennett in those scenes who loves to eat cheese and pasta and apples and growl at his uncle and blow bubbles at his grandmother and great grandma. That's what I see in those scenes who is, who is just over a year old. And so two thoughts rush to mind. One is, so at what point do I have to decide that I'm going to rob him of his innocence where he has no idea where I'm watching these things on television as I watch over him. Um, and, and his mom doesn't know cause I'm not supposed to give him any screen time. So let's keep that on the low. Um, 
but he, yeah. he's private yeah, forum I, I, we're having right here, dude. It's private, private forum. She'll never figure it out. Yeah. Most, most she friends. knows better than to watch I'm, this. Yeah, yeah oh, that's that's factually correct. I'm <laughs> seeing these things that are that are crushing me, and then it's almost like he senses it. He knows he comes up and he gives me a, a, a big wet kiss, and and I'm thinking, at, w- at what age is it? When he's five, when he's ten, fifteen is probably too late. What age do I have to rob him of his innocence and tell him that? that Martin Luther King's dream that, that you often refer to, Tim, that he's going to be ju- judged by the content of his character and not the color of his skin, that, that we're, we're not at that dream yet. That, that many people right now are living a nightmare. So at what age do I have to rob of that, of that innocence? And two, at, at, at what point do I need to use any bit of platform that I have to say, man, our, our generation is, is gone. Like, it's a wrap. These things are so institutionalized from decades, from decades, from 400 years, that it's tough to turn around that ship and change things. But I think there's hope for his generation. I, I really do. And I don't want him to be a hashtag. I don't want him. Why do you think there's hope? Deej, hold on, hold on, Deej. Why in this moment do you think there's hope? Because I thought Eric Gardner was going to be a moment. And I thought Ferguson was going to be a moment. We're back here. What gives you hope? Well, well racism is, is taught behavior. It's learned behavior. So the, these kids coming up are blank canvases. They have access to the entire world via the internet that I hope would give them a level of understanding of people who don't look like them or live in their neighborhoods, unlike us, the way we grow up. So I, I, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm just too much of an optimist. I try and be an optimist in life because it costs the same, so might as well be an optimist. But I'm hoping that his generation is different because... I, I, I don't have tear ducts. I can't remember the last time I cried. I, you guys were there. I didn't cry at my own wedding. But the, the first time that he is racially profiled and he comes and he tells me that, I'm going to ball like a baby. I, I'm telling you that right now. And so I, I, don't, I don't want him to be Trayvon Martin and walking home with Skittles and a drink and die. I don't want him to be Tamir Rice and playing cops and robbers at a park and police show up and he dies within seven seconds. I don't want him to be Michael Brown and his body is in the middle of the street for hours rotting while his mother is held back and can't get to him. I, I don't want him to, to be on Wikipedia for the first time ever after he isn't able to see it. And so when, when people constantly say, you know, uh, stick, stick to sports, I need a distraction. I'm sorry, I'm not your core jester. It's not my job to give you a distraction. And, I, and, and if anything, uh, maybe we need less of a distraction and we need more focus because if, if this doesn't alarm you, then that just tells me there's a lack of humanity and you don't see your child with, with a knee in their neck. You, you don't see your mothers crying on, on TV. You don't. You don't see your churches and your communities being used for funerals and not weddings. I do. So, so uh, it, it, th- that's why I, as, it's probably against my better judgment because when I do it and I get backlash on Twitter and I get racist threats on Twitter, my brother gets angry, my, my mother gets scared and my wife gets sad. So it's probably against my better judgment to do it. But I, I, I don't really know what else to do because just acting like it's not happening is, is that's not it. That's, that's not a, a realistic possibility for me. And, and I think that's the frustration that, um, a lot of us see is like, what, what way would you like me to protest period? Like it's been, you know, decades upon decades. And you told me that this way wasn't a great way to protest. And you told me this way wasn't a great way to protest. And you tell me that this way isn't a great way to protest. So what's left? Um, let me just say, let me like, whatever you want to say, because we've got to take a commercial break. Is there anything else that you want to add? Uh, I want so there's uh, again I've got I've gotten much pushback and there is a sentiment that in Canada we're above this or why are you bringing this up this is an American issue not a Canadian issue and I think it is unique to Americans because I mean I got a president that's rapping bars you know talking about when a looting starts the shooting starts I mean he might as well be a rapper that is unique but um, last I checked internment camps happen in this country residential schools happen in this country. Viola Desmond being thrown out of theater happened in this country. The First Nations community being treated like second-class citizens. In many areas, they don't have running water. Happens still to this day in this country. We treat people that aren't the 
majority, like like second class citizens. And so I, I I understand people feeling like this is not a Canadian issue because we strive as Canadians to be better and be because the hope and the goal for Canada is better and the ceiling that we often reach is much better. And trust me, I would not want to live in anywhere else in the world, especially in this moment, but our floor is not any better. It's not. And so it's disrespectful for people to say this experience is not happening in Canada. No, that's not your lived experience. You weren't pulled over 20 times in university like I was. You didn't die like John Campbell did or like Andrew Loku did. So don't say that this doesn't happen in Canada because it does. We are different. That doesn't necessarily mean we're always better. Donovan Bennett, uh, who's been with Tim and I forever, and uh, it was a really serious conversation, Deej. I don't want to get lost in the weeds. Your son's middle name is Timothy? I didn't know this. Really? Yes. Yeah. Whatever. No Timothy big deal. In, there's another Timothy in the family, Sid. Well, just Sydney's a beautiful name. I'm just saying. Sydney's a beautiful <laughs> name. Uh, Donovan, love you, man. Love you. <laughs> well, love you too, Sydney. <laughs> did you think you would come on and say that? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. No, I did not. I, did no. not. I took the under on, on love you, Sid. By the way, for the record, I did cry at your wedding when you sent me the invite ahead. I knew I had to buy a gift. I did cry. <laughs> there was an element of your wedding that made me cry, by the way, for the record. It was a lovely well, that, wedding. That, that, that gift lot got lost, so I'm still waiting for you to pay for your plate. Ding, oh, ding a lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was a very good, <laughs> it was a very kind gift. I don't care what Cabby says about yeah. me. I'm not cheap. Thanks, right, man. Be, be well, and we just wanted to have a, a compassionate conversation, so thank you. Thank you for having it with and without me. Real talk. Uh, there is... Donovan Bennett.